Hello, weirdos. Tonight you're going to learn about the most absurd emperor ever. Mike, Mike, Mike. I don't need it. I know how to eat the mic. The year is 16 AD. The incredibly popular Roman general Germanicus is on campaign, fighting the barbarians in Germania. Breaking with tradition, he has taken his wife and his young son, Gaius Julius Caesar Germanicus, just four years old, on campaign with him. For no other reason that historians can think of beyond, because it's cute, Gaius' parents dress him up in a miniature soldier's uniform, including boots and armor. The army loves this and basically makes him their mascot. The boots soldiers wore at the time were called Caligae, and the diminutive form Caligula has variously been translated as little boots, booties, and my personal favorite, bootykins. I have this delightful mental image of a chubby toddler running around the camp in miniature soldier's gear with all the battle-hardened Roman soldiers squeeing, look at him in his little bootykins, <laughs> playing barbarians and centurions with him and dying gloriously, flinching his little bootykins gleefully twisted his sword and drove it deeper while their brothers in arms laughed at them. That's about as light as this talk gets. <laughs> and it gives me no little pleasure that this jerk's hated boyhood nickname is how his legacy is remembered. <laughs> I'm sure you've all heard about Caligula, the most despotic, perverse, cruel, and unstable emperor Rome ever had. Made his horse a senator. <laughs> Ringing any bells. Trust me, folks, this horse is just the chariot on the screwed up Sunday that was Emperor Bootykin's reign. <laughs> From here, it's just a long slide into madness, cruelty, rampant narcissism, and lavish spending to the point of absurdity. <laughs> he had an absolutely shit childhood after that, though. His father died after a sudden illness on campaign possibly poisoned by the new emperor Tiberius. <laughs> his mother and his two older brothers wound up exiled and died in prison. He passed through the care of first one grandmother, then the other, and finally wound up as Tiberius's guest. Tiberius was aware of his ward's gro growing taste for cruelty and actively encouraged it. We're not sure why Tiberius named Caligula his joint heir, along with that Caesar's grandson, Gemellus, but he did. Upon Tiberius' death in 37 AD, Caligula and his co-heir, Gemellus, returned to Rome. Caligula, known for his famous father and for being a really cute baby, <laughs> arrived to fanfare and rejoicing. Seizing an opportunity, Caligula had his competition Gemellus quickly declared insane and therefore unfit to rule. Now there's some irony for you. <laughs> so how did Caligula go from beloved populist leader to worst emperor ever? Well, to start with, Caligula spent all three billion dollars that his predecessor Tiberius had stockpiled in the emperor's treasury within the first year of his reign. He distributed large amounts to each citizen, built tuna aqueducts, fixed roads, improved the ports, gave raises to the entire military. The people loved their new emperor so much in the beginning, they sacrificed 160,000 animals during the three months of public rejoicing to celebrate his reign. But most of the money went to support his ostentatious lifestyle like building jewel-encrusted pleasure boats that he used to host some of his famous orgies. Yeah. Eight months into his reign, Caligula was struck by a severe illness, after which he was an entirely different ruler. To quote Suetonius, a historian of his time, 
so much for Caligula as a Caesar. Now we must tell of his career as a monster. His inner circle quickly realized that he was definitely seriously mentally ill. He suffered from extreme paranoia and had his former co-heir Gamelus killed, despite the fact he'd already been declared unfit to rule and exiled. Most of his other male relatives were also killed during this period, except for his uncle Claudius, who he kept around the court and treated like a fool. He had conversations with the gods and with statues. He was prone to fits of rage and quit mood swings and never got more than three hours of sleep at a time. Uh, it wouldn't make anybody cranky, right? So what do you do when you have delusions of grandeur, but you're already the emperor? Declare yourself a living god, of course. At first, he started referring to himself as Jupiter in public documents. Then he appeared costumes as various deities, including Jupiter, Mars, and even Venus, within their temples and demanded to be worshipped as them. <laughs> that wasn't enough for him, though. So he constructed two temples in his own honor, complete with his own priests and rituals for his own cult. He wanted all the best artistic examples of religious iconography to be, to be beheaded and reheaded with his own likeness. Remember when I mentioned Caligula was good at spending money? He was really good at spending money. <laughs> In 39 AD, he commandeered every ship he could find to construct a floating bridge stretching two miles across the Bay of Baie just so he could ride his horse and drive his chariot across it. This wasn't to save time getting from one point to another. This is just for funsies. All the while, there was a famine going on and the people of Rome were starving to death. Class act, right? He didn't spend all of his time being extravagantly eccentric in Rome. No, he decided he was going to invade and conquer Britannia, despite having no military experience beyond being a really cute baby. <laughs> he marched the troops to the shores of Gaul, had them set up battle lines on the shore, and commanded them to attack the sea. <laughs> After their glorious victory, he told his soldiers to collect their spoils of war. Seashells in their helmets. As further proof of his conquest of Britannia, he brought back captive Britons that were Gaulish and Germanic slaves in disguise. As for the ships, he had them carried, not sailed, carried most of the way back to Rome. But wait, I thought he spent all of that money in the first year. How can he afford all of this? <laughs> well, after he drained the treasury dry, he started e executing high-ranking rich citizens based on trumped up charges of treason with no trials and seized their assets. What a jerk, right? Doesn't stop there. He also slept with married women while adultery was punishable by death and gave his victim's husbands a loud public report card style review of his wife's performance in bed. It was a capital offense to say the word goat in his presence because he was very self-conscious about how hairy he was. What a colossal asshole this guy was. Wasn't he ever nice to anybody? Yeah his sister, and his horse. We can't forget this famous horse, Incitatus. Where do I even start with this horse? I mentioned earlier he appointed his horse consul of Rome. That by itself is peak absurdity. But this wasn't just Caligula being an unhinged dictator. This was Caligula saying to the Senate, you are all so incredibly incompetent, my horse, 
could do a better job at the highest elected office in Rome than any of you. This horse had his own damn marble house with his own staff of servants to cater to his every whim. He had a manger of ivory, a collar of precious stones, and purple blankets. Caligula used to invite Incitatus to dinner, where he would offer him golden barley and drink his health in wine from golden goblets. Remember that famine I mentioned earlier? Yeah, still going. After finding all the most fantastic ways to fit, spend every cent in the empire's treasury, killing the rich and power to, powerful to keep funding his extravagant lifestyle, as well as anyone else who displeased, annoyed, or bored him, making a fool of himself with his British invasion and treating his horse better than most of his human subjects, it should come as no surprise that he got himself assassinated. In 41 AD, at the year, at age 28, just three years and 10 months into his reign, members of the Praetorian Guard, the branch of the military responsible for the emperor's safety, stabbed him 30 times, cause they were sick of his shit. His uncle Claudius succeeded him and reigned relatively peacefully uh, until his wife murdered him to put her son Nero on the throne. But that's another story. So I propose a toast to Incitatus, the only character in this story who wasn't a horse's ass. Yeah.